be shared with the PM's committee and the Department of Science and Technology, and on your side, whichever are the agencies or the yes. people who you think are worthwhile. Yeah, certainly from the, the oh, sorry. certainly from the Senate side, we would be very interested to, to receive. That. So I, I think uh, we reach at the end of it. I have a feeling that there are slightly different uh, uh, milestone, uh, different aims, uh, take-home lessons for each side at the end of the day for precise action points. And I think for me, for example, which will come through, I think, is an action point is something like Libra for India or something like Athena Swan or Libra for India. So that's, for example, is a one action point that we, I see for, for yeah. India coming out. Things Such things. From the so we will like to list that. Similarly, I'm hoping that you also learned something from what we were talking, and we will have action points based on that at the end of it. Okay. Thank you. So uh, Rohini and I have been co-chairing the panel one, which was the roundtable session on gender equality and unconscious bias. And um, let me just uh, make uh, some remarks about the, the panel. You'll remember that we have been uh, very much uh, looking into the landscape, into the statistics, into the figures, uh, seeing this, uh, or in particular commenting on that leaky pipeline business that we lose the women along the careers, uh, and that uh, in the end, and in the end, for at the positions of full professors, we only are left with just a handful of women, and this is really something. We cannot afford to lose talent along the way, and we have to do things to do along the way. So what we've written down, because we're, all the discussions have been very animated and very dynamic, which, I, which we found was really a good thing. And so we have written down just a number of, just a few things uh, that uh, we have insisted along the discussion on the fact that it's important in order to situate the, uh, the subject, it is important to have statistics along the way and in real time um, for, every, for all committees, for all uh, panels, so that um, we have a good view of what's going on, but also so that a committee which is doing or which is making decisions can see what is the amount of um, or what is the fraction of women candidating or submitting projects and what uh, what is really the outcome? Do we really, can we m maintain uh, fractions and can we uh, really, um, can we really, uh, does, do the results reflect um, uh, the input? Uh, and so committees should be aware along the line also uh, not, to, not to introduce skews in gender balance. So that was our first point. Um, we were insisting on the fact that institutions should um, install a sort of code of conduct to maintain or to assure gender uh, neutrality uh, uh, at all levels so that uh, there is no bias against women um, or well, against women or in favor of men. So there should be measures taken at all levels um, which, um, which concern unconscious bias or conscious bias, which is worse. Um, but uh, measures should be taken to assure neutrality, gender neutrality at all levels. Um, we, we, we insist also on the fact that women have to be given more visibility uh, in order to, that they can serve as role models. Um, and, um, and of course, we, we, we agreed that this has to be complemented by mentorship also in order to, to promote women more. And um, uh, we also we insisted on the fact, which was at the end of our discussion, there was a large discussion which goes beyond the image of women scientists. It's, and in particular, I remember that in particular, Indian colleagues insisted on that also. I mean, it's, and in France, it's a bit comparable. It's not only about women in science. It's about women in the society. Who, who is taking care of, who's getting the kids at school in the afternoon? Who's doing the housework? Who is taking the, the parental leave and stuff like that? So the image of 
women in society has to be changed, but this is really a long-term task. Want to add something? No, I think you can just read out our last four lines, Richard. Yes. We did that very well. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 were, uh, we, were, we agreed on the fact that this should not be, well, the, the family and, um, and housework should not be the role of women alone, but society is at large has to promote a more equal share of family tasks between men and women. <laughs> You're still convinced yeah. that this is true. <laughs> I think that yeah, and, uh, this is something strong that we sh could put that it's not only women in science, but women in society. Goes, yeah. and, also, and also, it's not only for the benefit of women, it's for the benefit of science. Yes. That was a too strong idea. No, yeah. I, I would <laughs> say it's, it's even stronger than that. It's for the benefit of society. <laughs> because society as, as a whole will benefit from a more equal uh, sharing of roles between men and women. And I think that we put into place or we discuss the role of women, which is a very good thing. I'm convinced of that. But I think that not only women will benefit from that, but men will benefit from that too. Yes. Thank you. So who's giving panel two? Thank you. Uh, so uh, I've been. Uh, very, very uh, well supported by my co-panelists, uh, Dominique there and uh, Maithili was somewhere over here. Um, and then we had um, Emmanuel and then we had um, Marion. So we had a quick powwow and we exchanged uh, documents in the night. And here is a very brief uh, summary of what uh, we deliberated. The panel was on how to attract young women to scientific careers. But we sort of took a broader landscape and we talked about how is it that we attract the youth to scientific career and of course build in measures over there which make sure that it is gender neutral and if necessary, positively discriminating towards the girl child. So one of the points uh, which is a very important point is that the choices of careers made by young girls are often influenced by society, family, friends, and the school atmosphere. So therefore, we need to sensitize all players involved in the education of the girl child. So we need institutional actions to promote equal opportunities for men and women. Uh, we need school management and gender mainstreaming consciousness to come in at that level. Uh, training of teachers to bring awareness to stereotypes. We have an action point to that. Or that. And I think it, this is where we, right from the beginning, should involve social scientists, and I've written in psychologists, educators, in order to effectively gather information and implement the program. Because there's a lot of, you know, uh, of learning that we as scientists can do from social scientists and psychologists because they know how to work in this space. They know how to work with educators. They know how to work with children. We want to be sure that the child's interest is held at the topmost level. So the second point, again, comes to the role of mentors, role models, and we added one, that is peer groups. Mm. A lot of children will listen to each other and their immediate peer groups. Um, teenagers will listen to teenagers. Kids in uh, middle school will look up to the teenagers. Um, and those who are in university will look down at high school kids, but they will <laughs> look to their university peers. So it's important at every level that we build peer support groups and mechanisms such a way that they can learn from each other and teach each other. So therefore, there is a lead, need for mentorships along the chain. So a mentor need not only be a professor or a director of a lab or wherever. We can have mentorships, build a mentorship chain, which is built up all the way through from the young at uh, middle school, high school, all the way to when a person is um, becoming an independent researcher, to when a person is transiting from an independent researcher to a higher level administrative position. So we have to sort of enable this. How do we do this? Uh, we can do this by getting testimonials from various women. We can do this by building, um, utilizing social media, by making short YouTube clips 
like Maithili said, was very effective in the International Mathematical Mathematics Association uh, meeting. So this will raise the awareness that there are very, very productive and uh, well, you know, full life led by scientists and technologists who happen to be women also. Um, the other thing would be to include role models from different uh, landscape. So it need not be just scientists and uh, leaders in scientific laboratories. It could be editors of journals. It could be um, administrators, for example, somebody who is doing a CNRS administrative position in science policy decision. So it, these sort of things will open the eyes to the children and young people in university that a career in science is not very narrow. It's broad. And you have many, many choices open for you. So we have to build mentors. We have to make some, involve some very innovative media in order to uh, communicate and make different types of peer groups. One peer group which is working very well in India in biosciences is called the India, Bi India Bioscience. Um, and I can send a link. So this is managed by young people. And they organize yearly meetings for people who have just started their investigative career. So there is something which really helps them because they know how they are solving their local problems. The other thing would be to actually uh, make some small video clips which will prevent stereotyping, stereotyping of the careers in science or stereotyping of what a girl should be doing. So that is another thing which we need to uh, start introducing early and therefore talking to educators, talking to psychologists, talking to people who are in government is very, very important because this goes beyond what CEFIPRA or CNRS or anybody is. And the last point is to emulate the success of the El Bouget type program that straddles science, technology, and education. So um, this is quite possible in India because I believe Saint Goban, uh, Dominique has found out already that they have a program in India, Saint Goban, India, for reviving women careers. We can similarly reach to other uh, organizations in India, for example, Airbus. GE, it, need, it can be European, it could be Siemens, it could be SAP Lab, L'Oreal, which is already doing a lot of very good. Have they have very good programs, L'Oreal has. AstraZeneca, uh, Unilever, Nestle, all of these are big, huge multinationals, and all of them, if they allow for internships or shadowing of young PhD students and university students in the industry environment, they're going to only be benefited. Okay, Shell has a lot of people, uh, GE. So these are the four. So these are the four sort of programs, and I think there might be issues where actually Shefipra can take the lead in uh, through your through our IRC experience or something to take one of these and make this uh, an actionable point at the Shefipra level. And the last but not the least, in order to make any of this, unless all the men scientists and technologists and administrators work with the women, it's not going to happen. Because the scale at which this dissemination needs to happen is huge. So everybody who is there in science has to do everything for the scientists of the next generation. Thank you. Thank you, Isha. Excellent work from panel two. And, uh, Panel three. Yeah, Elizabeth, maybe you can just come along. Uh, so we were the panel, the last panel, actually it happened uh, just before lunch. Yeah. So we didn't have any write-up, so it's just bullet points and uh, gathered from all the panelists. They made several important points. And there are several commonalities with the two other panels. So when we make the summary, we have to take it into account. So uh, one point that was made is the quality of publications should be under consideration while assessing especially the female scientists. The women seem to publish less number of papers but more quality papers. So you know the nature of performance of men and women probably are different. But I think this is irrespective of 
assessment of women, it should be true that it's the quality that should count, not the quantity. Independent of gender. <laughs> the second point that was made, and I think this is very important point, and it just works in our mindset, and especially in the recruitment committee and the other places, that whether a woman is married or not, the marriage really doesn't change or your life or affect the creativity and productivity. It's inherent of a person. So that we should keep in mind, and it should be somehow sensitized, this idea. The third point is the role of role models. We have stretched it, uh, uh, stressed on it a number of times. But what I also, I think I like the point, something which is achievable. You know, you should not put your goal too high when especially you were addressing young people, like the Lilavati's daughters, you know, it was taken from women scientists from all sphere, you know. Not necessarily they attended a great, great height, the greatest height, but they attended up to some point. That should be actually be publicized. Uh, gender bias, violence, distinct from sexual harassment. I don't think we had enough scope to touch upon this. Like, it is not always sexual harassment that hurts you, but the comments which are sexist, the behavior which are sexist. Violence, it's an harassment, so maybe we should just uh, change the word violence to harassment. Yes, so it not necessarily it has to be at the level of sexual. Uh, I think these are at least something I learned which should be brought back to India. There is need for equality advisor, which we, I don't think our, any of our institute has. Uh, a great idea to have unconscious bias workshop. Uh, we never had such thing. A uh, need for mentorship has been highlighted many of the times and career development programs, so this will be common with the recommendation of the other panels. Uh, need for proper data collection mechanism. That's actually a very important point. Because until and unless there is good data, you don't know how to convince people. The data should be authenticated and it should be complete, as complete as possible. Need to sensitize and involve high level decision makers in the institute. I think Rohini once said she was about to organize a meeting of all the directors. They should be sensitized. It's not only, I think it has been mentioned, it's not the, just the playground of the women, it's the playground of everybody to change this scenario. And the last one, that is, the gender issue is complex, and sometimes it's culture dependent. It's dependent on the locality, how people look at it. So it should be considered, all these aspects should be considered while making policies. I mean, we had this discussion how a wrong policy can backfire in terms of giving this 18-month leave. So one has to really consider all aspects and be very careful, even if your intention is genuine, that can actually backfire if you are not considering all that. So these are the kind of 10 points which we have listed, but maybe we'll have some commonalities. And Elizabeth, if you want to add anything more. No, well, it's the general theme. I mean, if you don't have really a gender quality plan and people who are in charge of implementing these measures, we will have a lot of good ideas. Some people will actually do something for gender equality, but we will never reach the broader mass uh, of uh, researchers. And uh, so it's, uh, it's also, it's really about policy making. And uh, that's, that is why, of course, to have an equality advisor or chief officer for equality, uh, in France now, well, all universities have more or less um, some sort of gender and sexual har harassment uh, person in charge of. Or, but uh, definitely, it's important to, to have it really <coughs> highlighted in an institution. It's uh, without r resources, manpower, women power. <laughs> You cannot achieve a lot, uh, I'm afraid. It's, uh, therefore, it's important, and uh, the decision makers 
have to be involved. That's, I think, was a panel-free issue, main issue. For other things, we have com yes. common, well. Um, <coughs> Can I make a personal comment on this, yes. please? Um, I agree with that. But I agree also, I've been um, discussing these issues for the last 10, 15 years, and there are people here who have been discussing this even longer. Um, I think it's time now to put some constraints. Um, I have been against quota, and I think that quota is a different thing. But we can put constraints. We can, there can be institutions can be much clearer and can have a real policy and say, no, if you don't have, if you have zero candidates, or if you have all, only male candidates, there will be zero recruitment. Okay, things like that. I think that institutions can have a policy in 2018 which puts more constraints um, and gives things like, I mean, we've been talking about distinction, we've been talking about recruitment, we've been talking about many things. I think it's the time now to go a step further and go in the fast lane. Of course, we can have advisors. Uh, but we can also have um, things which are more stringent and which can put organizations in the fast lane, be it the ministry, be it the CNRS, be it the universities. I think it's time to do so now. I can actually, add, can, I, can I just add, no, no, because I, I, should, I would like to make, get this word mentioned when we write it. What I call it is a gender audit. That, and this has to be a gender audit by the fund giving agencies. So I want to t take that thread and tell um, that I've known that in the last at least five years, perhaps more, whenever uh, committees are being constituted, it really is the chair of the committee constitution has oftentimes sent back the committee list because it comes with no women on it and said that this is not it. So here is the list of women who should be on there. Redo your committee. And I know that this has happened time and time and time again. And this is, and because of this, there are now many, many uh, grant review committees where you will see women who were never, never given the chance are there and they're doing a good job. No problem. No, so I think this gender audit and these constraints are something that needs to be mentioned explicitly. Just one word also on this point, for example, for mentorship. I think, I think in France up to now, mentorship is on the basis of volunteers. It's a family science, a family math. And I think it's time to go, to go to the next step and to have mentors for in any uh, doctoral schools and uh, for yes. all the, it, it's the next step. And I think it's necessary to think of that now. So we have to, to, to have, there are the, Volunteers' actions, it's some kind of experimentations. Right. And w when we see that it works, we have, we need a generalization for all the persons and uh, yeah. all the teachers. Yeah, actually, and, uh, I, I actually put in the point that yeah. um, Elizabeth made, uh, made uh, about valorizing. Exactly. I, that's already there in our document, I forgot to tell. Yeah, okay. So it could be a PhD student's time. Yeah. You can give credit for it. Correct. Yes. And it could be a young uh, high schooler. You can give a credit for it. And by doing this, they know that nobody is wasting their time. Yes. Why just, just that? I mean, so as, we said, I, as we said yesterday, which I really liked, was that even for a, f you know, when you are looking at a faculty for different, uh, giving different credits, we give credit for institute duties. We give credit for teaching. Right. We give credit for publication, for grants. We, have to give the we should give credit also to the outreach. Exactly. And this should be met. We should mention it's that. It's there. Uh, it's there in the document. I just forgot to. Yeah. Talk about good. It. No, mm. good. And in of the appropriate level, we give them credits. Yeah. So, for example, in my institute now we have teaching assistantship as a compulsory thing in the middle of the graduate school. So every PhD student will have an experience of how you will be a teaching assistant yes. in a classroom conducted by a senior okay. professor. Okay. So therefore, the PhD student knows what is teaching. And they participate either in the experiment or in the preparation of the slides or in the correction of the answer books. Similarly, the PhD student can be given a compulsory credit for outreach. So you go out to the government school or here or there and talk to them. Give a, in your own words, one day of the week, 
once in a semester. So we, so be um, sure that you included, you included already, but more specifically monitoring in the, in the list. So from the audience, is there some other suggestions that are not uh, in what we are? In our uh, annual appraisal system, there is a point for public awareness and outreach activities. Very good, very good. So we can include in that women centric. Okay. <laughs> we can suggest to create to make it women centric. Someone take note. <laughs> I would like to. Catherine. Mm -hmm. I would like to uh, reinforce what said was said this morning uh, to more include men also in this whole movement. Because uh, why is the situation like that? Because uh, 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 men were dominant, right? So uh, if women want to participate, so I, I want to um, uh, reinforce what was said this morning uh, that one should more include men in the whole, the whole story, right? If uh, if women want to play a different role, then men have to play a different role too. So uh, it has to go together, right? Now, uh, we mentioned this morning that actually most women in France, we don't have enough, we have enough women actually doing science, there's no problem, uh, and also enough women doing PhDs, but the problem is uh, afterwards, like somebody pointed out also this morning. So like uh, mostly women are concerned in, uh, in having children, and so the situation is always asymmetric, right? So, uh, uh, and uh, the, in any scientist's career, there's always a very delicate situation is one is, uh, when he finished his first or second P, uh, postdoc, right? So uh, these are the fragile moments of a career. And then we can ask ourselves, what can we do for women in these most fragile moments? When they had a child, uh, they did their postdoc. Uh, what, there are no specific programs, mostly, I don't, I don't know of them, who actually uh, support those women. I'm talking of experience because my wife is a, is a scientist and... Uh, a good part of my uh, career depends actually on her, and um, but she never got any recognition for all the work she did. And, and there's another person that also said that women typically produce less, but they have more citations. That's very much the truth for my wife, for example. She has very few publications, but her index is, is as high as mine. Just a, a remark. Um, I know a very well-known uh, French woman uh, at, at the science of, uh, Academy of Science, and she has got two babies during her PhD. I claim that it's not a problem to have a baby during, uh, uh, our, during our studies even. Three months stop is not a rupture in our career. We have to stop to, be, to, see, to, to, seem to be guilty, to feel guilty to have children. We have to stop it. And we have to stop men to think that we are guilty. No, c'est pour toi. J'en ai marre. OK. May I make a small comment? Yeah. Uh, this is just an observation. Srini is sitting at the back. Yeah. Uh, this is just an observation. Recently, Aisar Pune, Indian Institute of Science, Education, and Research, for those people who do not know, a very good institution in uh, India, Pune, they organized a one full day workshop on women after their PhD taking up administrative or administration related positions. This is just an observation. I participated because now they think that now I'm in an administration position. I'm not a woman, but I'm in an administration position after my you know a sort of long career of science myself. And what is the advantage? What are the advantages? I mean, those are all the issues that were discussed. This is just an observation for you to think about. Yeah, it's just to continue what uh, Martina said, to, to, to push some constraints on the institution rather than on the individual. Yeah. In France, there is an agency for evaluation that can also evaluate, that does evaluate the institution. And we, 
and maybe there is one in India. So one action could be to push to have the gender criteria in the criteria for evaluation in this agency for all the institution. Because as soon as you have this kind of constraint, then the institution needs to do something. So that's why I talked about gender audit. I mean, that's precisely that's what precisely I meant. Gender. And also, you need to make sure that these criteria are not only written on paper, but they're taken into account. Yeah. Because this is the main problem. There is, it's also for, if we talk about the assessment of people, the assessment of projects, if we talk about the assessment of labs and university, we know that um, criteria are written down. And in German, in German we, we, we say, paper is patient. I mean, you can write everything you want to as long as you don't apply it. So, so I mean, of course, uh, of course, we need these criteria, but we have to make sure that that everything is applied and taken into account. And uh, because uh, what what Dominic says, she says always, if we would if we would um, apply everything we have decided in the last thirty years, we would be far beyond. Mm -hmm. So let's do what's written, and then afterwards let's reconvene and see what has been done. Yes. We haven't even written because in India some of these things are not even written. Yeah. Some comments. So. Yeah. Okay. So. I'll request first of all to not to interrupt me while I'll speak for two minutes. Uh, I was surprised when the panel of youngsters came there. No one asked them about their views because they are the youngsters who are going to work shoulder to shoulder with their female colleagues and all. And I was, it, it was a strange situation. And what I think is we are discussing about women in science. That's a perfect topic. But we have to discuss about science because as you are saying, the role models are missing. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say that people are not reading about science and not searching about science. I'll tell you, like, there's one famous magazine called Science. They published a whole series called Extraordinary Science, Extraordinary Woman. But no one, like, saw that series and all. If you see that series, you will see the spark a woman scientist can have in life. One more example I can quote, as I'm in France. So they use, like, people don't know about the hidden heroines of science, I'll say. So the restriction enzymes and all those things people talk about, the Nobels and other things. But there are these hidden heroines in scientists like Daisy Roland and other things who are who in Pasteur Institute. So the, the stories are not told to the uh, girls in the college and other things. So the, he, here is what we are missing about role models, inspiration, and other things, because we are not reading internet is in our hand, in our pocket. But people are not doing search. They are not reading paper. They are not reading original stuff. They are just doing the work what scientists or their PIs are telling them and other things. So I might be wrong in things, but these are my views as a youngster, because I think there is some missing link in science popularization, which is missing so that I think the lack of inspiration is heading towards the independent thinking and I think so. These are my views. So sorry for that. Thank you. Yeah, there are a couple of things that I thought will be useful because uh, taking off from the point that we were talking that it's important that we have some kind of ways in which we are able to measure outcomes rather than look at what are the things that you're putting through policies. It's important to have a time-bound target increase in proportion of women institution-wise. It is extremely important to allow that to be put up, and I think that is something that will be useful, which will hold the institute responsible. I also want to sort of share with you with the kind of efforts that women scientists, and maybe even in the industry, both in the UK and even the Nordic countries, where they have seen that but to increase the proportion of women and the quality of women across the institution, it's important to see that it happens at the level of the board membership as well as at the lower levels. So you cannot say that we will do it at a particular level. These things cannot happen sequentially. They need to happen simultaneously for the impact that you're looking for. 
that is extremely important. And my final point is the kind of data that we are collecting, it is extremely important to be alerted that the data will not or may not actually throw up the strengths of women scientists because the data in the quantitative form may not give you what you're looking for. It's important to look at nuanced data in terms of the indicators that you want, and I think we should be very aware about that. Thank you. Thank you. So if there is no more suggestion, I think we will have a, a real list of uh, conclusions and suggestions, and we will uh, try to put it together in the coming weeks and having something ready for the next uh, scientific council. Um, I would like to say, and, and uh, you will complete if I forget something, that, <laughs> that uh, we have been working on, on this, uh, or thinking about this since more than one year. So the first scientific idea came from the Scientific Council and CEFIPRA, and we had this uh, uh, we had this idea that we should reach some useful suggestion at the end, not just a meeting. And yeah, you will you will uh, tell us about the idea also. And it has so all the scientific council was uh, was very helpful. And then uh, we had also some help for. Um, finding the uh, appropriate panel with the uh, uh, mission pour les femmes, since we are not experts in, in French uh, 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 person, uh, so it was very helpful. And Srini was helping also uh, from the Indian part, thank you. And Sefipra also, so this is the way that the panels were assembled and, and this has been very helpful. For the practical part, again, the mission pour les femmes and um, at, um, all the teams there, I forgot all the name of your assistants, <laughs> have been so uh, helpful and uh, you could uh, uh, enjoy this perfect organization. And uh, we also have to thank the financial support, uh, CEFIPRA, of course, uh, Mission pour les Femmes, uh, Institute of CNRS, the direction of CNRS, and also the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Did I forget something for no, the admiration? Everything. <laughs> Everything. So from this, uh, I will take this opportunity to say that as member of the Scientific Council, we uh, appreciate a lot the work of CEFIPRA and take this occasion to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Kumar for all the work he had done in the past year and how much we appreciate his action. And maybe you can, can say the yes, final words. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. In fact, I express my gratitude for all the co-chairs, uh, uh, I mean coordinators, four coordinators were there, and uh, all the chair of the session, panelists, speakers, students, researchers, invitees, guests, everybody. In fact, all have contributed uh, one way or other, but now uh, we need to uh, draw a roadmap from here. Uh, Dr. Rohini was saying uh, gender audit. Uh, 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 I was thinking uh, gender mapping. Mm. Uh, either way, uh, uh, the meaning is same. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, we need to set some timeline for it because uh, my next meeting of the overlapping group which has members from IRC and uh, Scientific Council where this matter is going to be put up there and to be discussed there uh, is on 22nd of November oh. in Kerala. So I would suggest that if you can uh, discuss among yourself, exchange your notes, whatever you want to say, and submit this to CIFIPRA so that this can be formally included in the agenda, can be discussed there, and then this will be discussed and placed before the governing body. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the governing body has representatives from both the government, and this time the governing body has been proposed for January 2019. So by then it should be available with us, and uh, I would appreciate rather if you can do it in the next 20 days 
So that means by, by 15th of October, in fact, I would take this opportunity here. The 15th of October is my last day in Sefibra. So, so if you can do that, otherwise Sati is here and Sati will take this forward to the next meeting of overlapping meeting where you all will be there, all means all my SC and IFC members. So uh, with this, if you can do that, I will appreciate that. And because this was approved in, in, in March, as I said, so I wanted to conduct this meeting. So I'm thankful to all of you. You have participated immensely and very serious discussion was there. So in fact, I take this opportunity to convey my thanks, my sincere thanks to President CNRS, who opened the door for this meeting and provided all facilities here. I'm really pleased to convey our thanks to him. Srini, you can do that. It was his generous contribution. Now, I would also like to thank Secretary DST and Secretary DHR, we requested them to send some nominations and there are two persons who were there, Nina Valecha and Dr. Vandana Singh. So I thank them uh, immensely. I also thank uh, Madam Oyer. She is a source of inspiration for Sifipra, the co-chair from French side, Indian Embassy, French embassy there, uh, everybody is contributing for this cause. So it will further boost our efforts in this direction, which is a very important, and let this be a game changer, eye opener, you can call it, or even a flagship program for India and France. So the, whatever roadmap you are thinking about, uh, Gene, uh, gender audit or gender mapping, please do some timeline and submit it to us. I'm once again thankful to all the participants here. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> As a participant, can I thank the four organizers of this wonderful workshop. Thank you. Thank you.